Hello, thieves. And here we are again for another trip round the horn in an age undreamed of. But until and before we get back into where we left off last week with the thieves, as OBS is wont to do, it updated this morning. So I want to make sure you can hear all of my beautiful people before we start to get into this beautiful talk. So. Let's jump straight down to our good friend Steve. Steve, tell us who you'll be playing and how you're doing today. Hold on one second, buddy. I don't see anything coming through and I doubt that they can hear you because as soon as I went live, all my things switched over. And so give me one second. I'll make sure we're... Alrighty, buddy, go right ahead now. Steve, tell us who you're playing, and uh, go from there. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing good, buddy. Thank you. Uh, how's everybody doing? I'm glad to be here. Everybody can hear me. We're good to go. Cool. Uh, I play Pau Trilato, uh basic uh, thief, villain. Uh, he is ready to see what goes on with the fish people and the magic and all the chaos that is uh, apparently about to befall us. So, uh, looking forward to it. Good. I'm glad that you have that positive outlook on it right now. It'll be required in the moments ahead. And we will jump further down from Pal to the mighty Schwa. Mark, how are you doing today, brother? Hi there, folks. My name is Mark Slack, and I will be playing the mighty Schwa. I'm excited to be here. I had a lot of fun last week, and I'm excited to continue with the scoundrel known as Schwa. He is a diminutive... Uh, four foot nothing, uh, roguish, acrobatic type with a big personality, and uh, I'm excited to see what happens next. Fantastic. And that personality, coupled with Pal's optimism, will surely see them through the trials ahead. We'll see. As we jump back up to the top of the order, Oz and the mighty Zafar, or the amazing Zafar, how are you doing today, brother? Hello, um, I'm rather hot because we have a heat wave here in the UK. Um, I know you are laughing about it, but for us it's not a laugh. Um, I will be playing the amazing Zavar, who is a uh, merchant and um, what actually he deals in, you will see in a moment, um, a merchant from um, Zamora, um, a, a man larger than life in more ways than one. Uh, he is tall, he is big, he is heavy. And he has an equally big personality and an equally big beard. Right. So with the beard, the optimism, and the large personality, we are coupling together quite a crew to face the evil ahead. As we drop down to the first of our two sorcerers, Emma, how are you doing today and who will you be playing? Hey, Greg, I am great. I am ready to get back into Conan because things are just starting to get weird. And that's always the best, the best place to be. I'm going to be playing uh, Zerga. She is a perfectly normal uh, priestess uh, who at present, I believe, is hopped up on drugs and naked, uh, commuting with the unknowable. Sounds good to me, right? Perfect. So uh, as a recap, hopped up on drugs and naked, big beard, Big personality, optimism. Ethan, how are you doing today? And can you make this the perfect storm of elements needed to defeat Conan an age undreamed of? Sure, uh, I'm Ethan. I'm playing Kassar, who is a very tired scholar, <laughs> who is also possibly super haunted. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. I, I don't know if you need to say anymore. I, as I'm, we... I'm currently also in the, the dream place with Zerga. <laughs> Correct. So it technically you are haunted, hopped up on drugs with the hopped up on drugs and naked Zerga. Everyone's uh, looking at the beard of Zafar. Everyone's feeling the personality of the mighty Schwa and everybody is experiencing the upbeat, positive nature of Pal, who, if we recall from last session, chased down two people that were fleeing to murder them. So optimism definitely within his bat utility belt. But before we go any further and before we get back into the role of the thieves, it's best to tell you what exactly happened last time and to do so quickly. 
The thieves were hired by the king of Zingara to go down to a contested area of uh, the border between Zingara and Argos. And as they went down there, they were told that there had been some type of an event, uh, a naval event where a fleet had been struck by either some type of natural disaster or an attack, and pieces of the ship and the fleet and the bodies had washed ashore. The king of Zingara, feeling that the merchant, or fearing that the merchant princes of Argos would see this as an attack by Zingara, wanted this group to go into the disputed territory, uncover any evidence possible to prove Zingara's uh, innocence, and in turn keep the ire of the merchant princes away from them. And so as they were dispatched, they were told to look for the purple cloud that was kind of resting in a geosynchronous orbit above this site of this event. And so as they noted the, the purple cloud and descended upon it, the group that you see here, accompanied by a 15, 16-year-old Conan, um, went down into the area where they were confronted before actually reaching the beach by a group of Argosian soldiers who were the con uh, uh, Condulteri, which is a merchant or mercenary group of the merchant princes. They easily dispatched them, burning them with acid, melting off their faces, cutting off their heads, um, doing wonderful things that only the age undreamed of of Robert E. Howard's Conan can provide us with. And as they bested this first challenge, they went to the beach where they found a literal carpet of dead sailors. Now, these sailors did not possess the bloat or possess the, um, the, the appearance of those that had died in the ocean, of those that had uh, been subjected to what a uh, being submerged in water would do to a corpse. They appeared by all intents and purposes to simply have fallen over and died. And as the investigation continued, there was loose treasure found, nothing of True, uh, true import, but what the group did identify was that the borders of the cloud above seemed to mimic the borders of the carpet of dead bodies on the beach. As they went closer towards the center of the area, it was the two sorcerers that discovered that there was a rather odd configuration of bodies, as there were a shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder, back facing the sky, five corpses lined up. It was there that they learned that this was a portal of some kind, and they attempted to open it. And speaking of our sorcerers, one of them in particular, who's been haunted, has also been hearing things whispering into his ear as Kaser uh, continues to hear, Find me. Yes. And as this haunted young man is compelled or curious, about what has become. He has drug his sorcerer friend uh, uh, with him, and as they begin to do this performance, both of them now hear in the middle of this ritual this com compulsion to find your clothes. But before they were able to open the door fully, from behind them and from the, the, the surf came several amphibian looking creatures, which I'm gonna throw up so everybody can love them again as these dwellers have come out of the water and are moving to attack. When last we left the group, as the sorcerers were opening the door, we had uh, the amazing Zafar who was preparing a firework spell. We had the mighty Schwa and we had Pau who were moving to intercept with the young Conan in a defensive posture. But before we begin, I would like to tell everybody we are close to a couple of monthly goals. Uh, the fun thing about this is if we get, I believe, six more followers during this session, everybody on screen gets a chance to be awarded a very special boon. Um, they can either get an additional fortune point, they can get healing that they can use at any time, or information, which in this particular encounter might be enough to get them where they need to be without dying. Uh, the other thing is, if we reach our bit goal during the, uh, the course of the events, the same thing happens. So we have a chance to have several nice, fun things happen for this group. I'm not really hoping that that happens because I want to see them suffer. But that's great, and that's there, and that's here, and that's now. So as we drill back down, and as we creep back to the beach that we see before us, um, the bodies are littered everywhere and the creatures are climbing from the surf 
And when last we left, the fireworks were a flying. And as they fly, I would like Zafar to give us his damage roll as they indeed coughed up in front of these two dwellers. Um, first, I'd like to describe what it looks like. So, Safar Please. reaches into one of the many pockets in his coat and takes out a clay ball about this big and lobs it towards the um, those fish people that are approaching. Um, the ball lands right between them, shatters out of this, out of the broken shards of the ball, these fireworks erupt and go everywhere and this is a loud firework uh, so that's ooh, a total of three damage mm -hmm. that's oh. physical damage and two effects this is area uh, one of the properties is area which means anything in close no in reach of one of the targets uh, is also affected and because i rolled effects anything in uh, two targets within close range of that target are, uh, are also affected also take uh, to, to also take three damage plus two resolve damage because it has the uh, the value of fearsome okay so three uh, physical damage and two resolve damage mental damage okay so here's what you see uh zafar as the fireworks hit inside and explode all around these creatures they continue to walk through the area, the loud explosions, the popping, the explosions of flame that would cause even the most seasoned of veterans to at least jump or move to the side or shiver or wonder what's going on, freeze, act in some type of atypical way. These creatures walk through. One of them actually takes a blast to the sh directly to the shoulder as it pops in this area of effect, and you see it bounce off a very hardened piece of almost shell that this creature seems to be wearing as they stride towards you. You can see in their bright, glistening black eyes, not one, though they're very inhuman, you don't see them move or rotate as if they're flinching or as if they're... Uh, uh, leering away or doing anything like that they appear unfazed as whatever damage was done their physical bodies were able to soak it up and whatever mental damage was done they seem to have enough courage to be able to withstand it and so for those of you uh ba there's no such thing as ac in conan you can do two types of damage the physical and the mental uh you have a soak rating depending upon the defensive capabilities of the creature or your character uh armor being normally what your character would have um you have to do or the enemy has to do above that number to actually hit you it seems as if this firework uh blast by the amazing zafar was below the threshold that was needed to hurt these creatures as they go forward and now what I would like you guys to do is as the first attack has gone off and now everyone is witness to them the mighty schwa pal Conan and Zafar are all gonna roll a resolve roll or a discipline check for me please to see if the sight of these creatures taking this damage is enough to sway you from your course of action. Discipline. It's at the very bottom underneath willpower, yep. right above sorcery. Yep. Ooh, one success. None for me. Okay. Zero. And it, with a 20, which gives me doom. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, here's what we're going to do. Um, as two of you begin to go back, let me do Conan. He's okay. Uh, Conan, 
kind of sits there and steals himself and looks over and sees that Zafar seems to be all right. But the other two, the mighty Schwa and Pal, you guys start to kind of shrink back as if the very presence of these creatures is overwhelming your senses. Even though you've been in countless brawls and countless fights, you feel the the idea of sorcery afoot. And as they turn and you guys fail that, they look and they begin to throat this croak as it <laughs> as they look at you and the 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 very hearing that comes through you shivers you to your core as you each take you each take three mental damage which is um up at the top you'll see that it is resolve three resolve damage and um you are both going to be stunned for your round, unless you would like to give me a point of doom. And then you're free to do whatever you'd like. I definitely want to give you a point of doom. Okay. Mark, would you like to give me a point of doom or be stunned? I would like to give you another point of doom. I have a question about doom. Is there like a cap at which you reach and then you just win? Is there a cap that... Well, if there's a... There's an amount that I can get to where such terrible shit begins to happen that, yeah, I'm going to win. But okay. like I said, I'm not going to use it to its full capabilities until we get further into these sessions. As we're all learning and understanding the consequences involved with Doom, how to utilize momentum, which is your resource pool, and then, of course, to use your, um, your other characteristics as you're able to pull all this stuff up at once. Um... Yeah, but let's make sure that, yeah, remember you guys all have your full allotment of fortune points still. As Ozzy, I'd like you to hand it off to the next person in line as everybody has spent their doom and your people are able to take care of this. Um, do I remember if we have someone who can do a ranged attack? You had somebody that used an arrow before. I'm, I'm currently in the, the dream realm, though. Right. Ah, right. So th I can't see those two. Um, then I'll hand it to Pal. Okay. Pal, I guess, you know, kind of, what the hell is that? He kind of sh shivers himself out of it. Can I, oh, Jeet, no. can I uh, dart toward them, like, separate myself, jump off of a piece of wood, since I have nimble as a cat, do a flip over one and land behind one and strike is that a possibility uh it sounds like there's an awful lot of uh, a couple of things going on in there but i'll either make you uh do a couple rolls but i would if you want to do a maneuver on top of that i'll if you spend a point of momentum yeah you can you can flip and get behind him absolutely okay that's what i'll do okay liking that liking that do you want a acrobatics roll? Nope, go right ahead and attack. You spent your momentum, so describe to us what Pal does as he approaches the first of these two creatures. Pal will run toward, charge toward them, and as he does, he looks for like a piece of shipwreck that he can springboard off of. And as he springboards off of it, he'll do like a, almost like a double flip because he's, he's very acrobatic and he's going to land behind them, and he is going to look for, he saw the armor, I'm assuming, correct? He's gonna look for a soft spot behind them and attack from the from the back end, if that is a possibility. Yeah, go right ahead, roll your attack roll. Let me get back up there to melee. Two successes. Nice. So go ahead and uh, you have a momentum that you have gained from this. Um, you can do a second attack or you can do bonus damage to this one if you would like. Um, which will do, do each it. momentum that you spend will do an additional point of damage. So you I'll can use the one. Second that you... attack. Okay. There we go. There you go. Oh, and yeah. that. Yeah. That one's going to be three total successes as you have inside of your uh, uh, low enough to hit your discipline. And, and so 
with all of those, I want you to roll me some damage. As let's do the first one first. Roll me your damage for the first attack that hit. Eight. Nice. So as the eight comes in, you don't have any effects on that knife that you use, do you? Let me go over and take a look at it. Uh, intense. I don't know if int I, I forget what intense does. I have to look it up. I had it written it, down. Let me see it. It compounds effects, but there's not. They don't currently have anything right. on them that would compound. So. That, um, yeah. Okay, so you hit them with eight, and just as you described with this first strike, you're able to find that that, that piece of shell that bounced off the firework ends just b below its shoulder blade to allow for movement and range of motion with its attacks. You're able to kind of put your knife up through there and really dig into the meat as you feel it just dip and dig into this. You hit it to the point where you hit whatever constitutes like an artery or a vein for this creature as you can already see the blood pulsing through the wound and over your hand as you've hit something major inside of this creature. Let's do your second attack as you can augment um, your damage by one with each of those momentum or you can pull the two momentum, whatever you'd like to do. What Nelson, can you say that again? You, uh, yeah, with your with your second attack, you succeeded with an additional two momentum gained. You can give those two momentum to the party pool. You can use, I, you can stack both of those for two more points of damage. You can. I want to give it to the pool. Let's give it to the people. Okay, give it to the people. It's very yeah, I'm going yeah. to give it to the peeps. So, and he, as he does that, he screams, Conan. He calls him Conan, not Conan. Conan, protect Zafar. He owes me money. And he strikes. For damage. Another six. Okay, so with this six, as you're you drive it into them and then you twist it again inside of them, and as you extract it, the twist acts as the second attack, as whatever you hit in there is further torn by the wicked heart uh, and describe your weapon again so everyone knows exactly how bad this thing feels whenever it Michael, is. It's a you set tie knife and it is Looks like a half a moon, if you look, or a quarter moon, if you look at a moon, and it, but it's got like almost like shark teeth, and then it's got a handle and it's got like so it is basically just like a dealing of. I mean, it just will shred right into you. I mean, it, it would it would be very nasty if you ever got uh, hit with something like that. I would believe. Okay, so as um, you extract this blade, the very teeth that you mentioned dig into the flesh and you actually see it kind of pull and almost noodle yes. away from the creature as you rip through sinew and muscle, dragging most of it out into the ocean air. The creature just croaks again in absolute pain as its left arm is basically rendered useless. You've destroyed that shoulder. It's still standing, but it seems to be in a very bad way. Who would you like to give initiative to? Well, I'm going to go to the uh, mighty Shway. Um, quick question. Yep. Would a uh, a reduction of two soak done anything to uh, to the firework damage? A reduction of two? Yes, it would have. Right. Then I'll spend the momentum I gained because I didn't spend my momentum for the, oh, the oh. attack roll. Okay, and then what we'll do then is uh, we'll add that to the physical. How's that, Ozzy? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yep. Definitely the physical. Okay, and so with that, uh, as you pull the blade out, the creature drops in front of you. It hits the surf and is floating in that six, eight-inch water. As it's just floating there, this blood or whatever ichor is constituting the fluid of its, of its form leaking out into the area as the one that's with it seems not to mind or notice that its companion is now dead. So the others would have been lightly damaged as well. And yes. Because, uh, of, the area, because of the area effect. Correct. He has taken two additional physical damage because of the momentum spent. And speaking of momentum from our very own Project Kronos Barney, you guys received two momentum from Don as he is making sure you guys are chocked full of your momentum. Thank you, so Don. You guys... Pal will be like, we're eating fish tonight. As he, there's one drops. Okay, that's over to Schwa. Schwa. All right. Schwa, at the emergence of the fish man, has only now come to realize what's befallen Zerga and Kassar. Um, 
so he is shocked into action because his longtime traveling companions, as he knows, when the sorceress types go into this weird, like drugged out naked trance, they are completely oblivious and they always need a little bit of extra help. So he's thinking that they probably haven't spotted these fish men. So he's going to uh, acrobatically roll into the scene and try to position himself between the sorcerers and the fish man, holding his spear out uh, defensively. And um, once I position myself there, I'm going to attack the nearest fish man with the spear thrust. Okay, we'll say that you can get yourself easily in between because you already kind of are in between the two. So just with your movement, you're able to close on the fish man and keep your back to the sorcerers as they are engaged in whatever wickedness is part of their craft. And you can get yourself with close enough to launch a spear attack, Schwa. Now at this moment, can I spend momentum to make my attack better? Um, at this point, yeah, you can go ahead, and if you want to do something preemptively, you can, um, let me see, do, do, do. at this point, first die, excellent. yeah, you can um, add it to damage as it comes in, you can always use fortune if you want to hit for the best possible, like, nat 20 type of hit, um, you can't use momentum to better your chances of making a shot, though. Uh, oh, yes, okay. Yes, you can. You can oh, buy a die. So you, you can buy a... The only one that you can buy a extra die roll for, though, is Fortune, as far as I know. No, 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 no. Oh, it's okay. The, it's it's, it's the, the, the main thing. is You buy a... Uh, so this is preemptively. Uh, the first die, extra die, costs you one momentum. The second costs you two and the third costs you three, but you can buy a maximum of three dice. I will definitely take Ozzy's word over it, over my own. So yes, you can buy, with one momentum, you can buy an extra die to add to the two that you currently roll. Okay, great. So that's with um, that's with any of my skills, Ozzy? Yes, uh, any duty 20 roll. Okay, so I'm going to use... Um, I'm really bad at it, but that's kind of why I want to use a momentum. Um, I'd like you to spend one momentum to get an extra die on a spear attack okay so whenever you roll this the uh, actual to hit your melee and it asks you for a bonus die just add one to it and that'll take it from a zero uh -huh. to a one it says modifier to damage dice all right let's see if i do this right let me see here here yeah, that's your damage. Let's go back. We can use that for your damage, but let's go back up and uh, you got to roll the attack first. Oh, I should have done brawn, right? Correct. Go back up to uh, agility and then two down to melee. And whenever you hit the die beside that, go ahead and click one to add it to it. And that'll give you your attack roll plus the momentum that was spent. How's that? There you go. Yep. So you actually hit and you gain two additional momentum that you can use for damage. So with the first damage that you rolled, you have one, two, three, four, all of them with an effect. And you can roll an additional, and I can, here, I'll just bump it in there. That's five with an effect. So five damage with five effects. And let me see what your barbed spear does. I'm pretty sure your barbed spear doesn't say here for your quality, but I'm pretty sure that it is... Um, piercing which and means that you yeah you evade all soak damage with the effects that were laid on there nice. so as you run this thing through schwa you're able to catch it just beneath the sternum and as you bring it in there and kind of drive it back um with this added damage it bypasses every shred of armor this thing has as the sharpened tip of your spear just crunches right through this shell that it seems to be wearing, causing it to kind of crack and splinter. And as you shove it in, very much what Pal saw as this black ichor pours out, you have created the same type of wound just below its sternum. It's kind of running down your arms as you're at a lower angle from it. Is there anything you'd like to do? Yes. As I'm killing this um, fish man, I am looking over my left shoulder back at Zerga and Kassar, and I'm pleading with my uh, 
tranced out friends. No, no, this is no time for sleeping. There are fishmen here to kill. Wake up, wake up now. So that's the perfect way to segue over to Conan, who, uh, Zafar, you see the large boy uh, coming forward with his two short swords as he kind of gets beside you and looks over and he, and he says, I've never seen their like, as he's looking at these creatures as they're coming out of the water. He seems a little rattled by it, but otherwise he's shoulder to shoulder with you. Um, let's cut over to our kids that are in the dream world as Zerga and Kassar are now opening these doors and we're going to say Zafar is probably the closest. Zafar, as you kind of Conan comes beside you and you look at the large boy, you kind of see in your periphery behind you that while the two are still seated in front of this odd configuration of bodies, you actually see the body split and in the real world they begin to open as this two and a half by two and a half people door opens into a cavern. But Kassar and Zerga, as you're standing there, you're up and pulling these things as your dream essence or your spirit bodies are lifting these things, these, these doors, using the sternum of the split man to pull open these do this door of bodies. And as it opens and swings inside, you see a crumpled form just at the top of a flight of dark descending steps. The body seems to be down and without a roll because you've seen so much of it recently, he's wearing the outfit of an Argosian sailor. And when he turns and looks up at you, half of his face is missing. It's not bleeding. It doesn't look as if it's been hacked off. It looks as if it simply ceased to exist. And as he's looking there, his jaw, which ends in just a jut of uh, finely fused bone and muscle as it's working, and you can see the muscle working as this man is talking, and somehow, beyond and defying anatomy and gravity, he looks up. Have you come to kill me? This is technically your round, guys, so you're not in the initiative, but we're taking a moment to see what you would like to do as he addresses Zerga and Kassar. Zerga looks at Kassar for a second <laughs> and says, uh, if that's what you want, sure, <laughs> why not? He seems to lower his head as if waiting for some type of blow. This odd three-quarter, 50% head that he has. And as his head goes down, you just hear him saying, Took my face, my mind. I don't know who I am. Can't remember my children. Kill me. Uh, do we have equipment in this weird realm? Strangely enough, it is as if you you guys feel like you're walking around in the physical world. Um, okay. So everything that you had on you when you sat down in the sand for Zerga, that's nothing um, because she was naked. Uh, you guys still seemingly possess. Um, if you were to look behind you, you do not see your bodies kind of sitting there. Um, however, you don't see your friends either. That would presumably be just feet away from the front of this odd portal. Um, but you do have everything that you had. Okay. Um, I don't know if she would have taken it. I think Kassar would have offered his cloak to Zerka <laughs> while they're in this weird shadow world. I don't know. Oh, she would take it. That's nice. That's a good look. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, he, at this point, he's going to draw his bow and take aim at this man's half skull. Okay. Uh, you may go ahead and roll an attack roll. Uh, this is going to be actually go ahead and roll damage because you can literally walk up and place the arrow, you know, 
six to 12 inches away. This man is not resisting. He is not moving. He is asking you to do what you intend to. I think if, if he's walking up and getting close to him, he's just going to say, this is your part in this. May you die easy. And then fire the arrow. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. That's all nope. you needed as... <laughs> Yeah, that's what, one damage with an effect. So um, okay. as you're able to hit him against the back of his half head, he gets drawn down into the the stone and this odd earthen and, and natural steps that he seems to be a part of. You see blood pour from the back of his head, and as it pours, it gets soaked into the stone, and the darkened hallway flares with runes and iconography as they ripple in a weird purple and red and blue and they pulse down the this tunnel illuminating maybe 30 40 feet of descent <laughs> cuz are still standing like uh this seems bad what isn't bad? This is what we're made for. Um, I would like each of you to roll a lore roll for me as the kind of reverberations and the pulse of these runes turns into a constant glow. Two. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, you have an additional momentum on that score uh, Ethan, I'm going to allow you to have more information if you'd like to spend the momentum now, or you can pull it. Actually, you guys are maxed out on pull, so I would I'm say I'm going to take ahead. it. Yeah. Okay, um, so in between this combat round, whenever you guys are experiencing a kind of a longer moment, a draw against the, the quick pace of the fight just outside in the waking world, um, when you look around, you guys both realize that every square inch of this tunnel seems to have been carved, inked, marked in some way with various hands and as you read it it just comes across as the ramblings of madness most of it makes zero sense in the languages that you can identify it that there's no there's no rhyme nor reason to what it's saying you guys know enough about of sorcery and rituals that this isn't a spell this isn't this is just insanity um the diary of a disturbed mind as you are looking around and seeing all of this it also makes you think that it would take a lifetime to do all of this, to write all of this, to take this amount of time to carve and inscribe and ink these stones. However, um, it proves to you guys that whatever this place is, it's obviously of a magical manifestation, but it's not something that just came into being. It looks like it has been somewhere for a very long time. What else you guys learn is this, among the ramblings and among the insanity, you get bits of clarity, bits and pieces of information. And because of the momentum spent, you get a little bit more than you would have. It seems as if something or someone has created, entered and sealed this portal recently. As long as something from our world remains inside the portal, the rift will not close. The writings also prophesize of an occurrence nearly identical to the one that you are experiencing outside. It loosely translates as follows. And so the seas shall swallow its riders, and displeased with their taste, spit them all back to land. A fog of royalty shall swaddle the dead, and the sacrifice to Calante, the teeth of Atlantis, shall begin." From the spat corpses a way shall be opened, and Calante can return to the world to rend with his teeth and feed the sea. It shows a descent into darkness, and you all realize that as you finish kind of understanding this and are inside the glow of these runes, you hear the return of the sounds of battle outside and realize that you are now once again in your bodies just outside of the now open portal. Let's cut back to the amazing Zafar. 
You are standing shoulder to shoulder with Conan. One of these creatures is still up. And as you turn and look at them, Zafar, it looks at you. It's the spear point of the mighty schwa skewering and shish kebabbing this creature. It turns and brings its axe down in a moment of defiance against the smaller man. It misses twice as it swings down and the wound is so great that it cannot make a connection and as it loosely misses the man his his nimbleness too much able to control the creature with the the spear that's still in him almost moving him around uh, as one would a pole marionette um zafar you are standing and you see this creature is reeling it is um on its last legs as it is right next to me, I draw my stiletto and try and jam it into a space where it hurts. That's always a good and space. I'm going to... Actually, this will be, will be rather fitting. I'm going to spend a fortune before uh, to make this a, a su- uh, critical success. Absolutely. So that will give you... Um, as you spend those out, I that'll give you stab the creature into the eye with my stiletto. Okay, roll me damage for that one. As uh, this will be, stiletto. and as you guys are maxed out on momentum, Oz, I'm just going to put it in as additional damage, unless you have something else you want to do. Yep. Ooh, so that's four damage and an effect. Uh, Stiletto is unforgiving. I think that is the. I need to poison. I'm pretty sure that compiles the effect of what's happened before if he's in a state of something or other. It doesn't matter though, with your momentum additional damage. The stab in the bulbous black eye as it inky releases against your. The inky gel releases against your hand. Uh, Zafar, it drops, and Schwa, you feel it go slack as it drops into the ground. It joining the and I jump meat back, of humanity. Drawing yeah. my stiletto out of its eye socket. Conan comes forward and he kind of claps uh, everybody, Zafar and Schwa and Pal on the shoulders. Was, I've never seen the like. It was excellent. And, um,. He turns and Conan sees that Kassar and Zerga are standing there. You guys are both awake now, but there is a door made of human bodies leading into the floor or the ground of the beach, descending into a dark tunnel. He walks forward. What is this, Wizards? Not sure yet. Yes. A way forward. And possibly the cause. Where does this lead? Do you know? Not sure yet. It's dark. Might be treasure. So is this where this all came oh, from? Sir, ears perk up. <laughs> He's going to examine one of the weapons of the fish people, Jeej. He's going to try to take... Does it, they look valuable. Because he's never seen these kind of weapons before. Um, they are, yeah, they are made from living coral, and you can see that they hold the the, the color of coral that has not been boned or anything like that. Um, they have holes that you can see through them. Some of them are solid in nature, but they seem to hold a biting saw-like edge that is razor small so if you wish to take one of those you certainly can they oh, also appear to be attached to some type of swing harness that can uh you feel that you could probably wrap it against your forearm and flick it out into your hand it's some yep. type of mechanism he definitely takes one and says to uh the rest of them he said so far they may pay a pretty penny on the market they seem very good You guys now have a tunnel leading down. The runes are still glowing enough to illuminate your way. Rick is going to take this opportunity to somewhat get dressed 
Um, and pretty much she's just, she's got this very like long scarf and she's going to like wrap it around herself like a Frazetta painting. So. And um, she's going to get her weapon and a vial of acid. I think while you're off doing that, Kassar's just sort of like looking down the hole with his bow drawn just in case something decides to come out while everyone's getting ready. If we want to solve this thing, it's down there. Here goes nothing. So, for no particular order, who's going in first? For no particular reason, who's going in first? Uh, I think Schwa is definitely going to jump down the hole. <laughs> shouting, come everyone! Zerga has opened our doorway! Let us go! Uh, mind, mind, mind your step. Uh, <laughs> I like that he's going first. Who's going next after the mighty Schwa? Kassar might. I think just to keep an eye out and just generally very interested, but didn't want to go first. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Schwa, so Kassar. Cool, so he's next. Okay, Zafar. And then rounding out the end, oh, is it going to be... Pal's going to go last. He is not going down that hole. He's going to be the back end, believe me. Is there going to go... go she, she'll go before Pal then, but she wants to make sure that Conan goes ahead of her. Right. Conan, yep, we'll you go. Go, boy. Um, and then Pal will be last. Uh, as Conan goes over the threshold and he's told to watch his step... He looks down for a moment and he sees that there is an arrow wound, but not an arrow in the back of this thing's head. And he looks down for a second and sees that Kassar still has his bow out and knocked that he did not see him fire or hear him fire. But for a moment, the large boy's intelligence shines through as he puts something together that he keeps to himself. So as you're going down into this area, it descends maybe 30 or 40 feet and you are below the beach. However, the geography and the, the geology of this place does not speak of a, an earth or, or a place beneath such a, a coastal area. It is old. It is ancient, filled with stones that are of the deep mountains, not of the coastline. And as you're going down, you can smell that rich, uh, that that rich wet earth, not the um, not the not the, the the almost dry sense that you get from the beach or the sand. And the rain that had been falling, that that purple fluid that had been coming from the sky, it drips and kind of runs down into this area in small rivers and rivulets as it drops from stone to stone as you walk and you can see that the further in that this water gets it begins to turn to mist and it just lifts off the stone and floats into the air there's not a heat to anything nothing that would cause something to evaporate that quickly but it just seems to reach a particular depth and then it just lifts and maintains and becomes a small kind of purple fog that creeps along the stairs and drifts a bit. Um, the top of it wet, the bottom of it hazed. And as you get farther down, you can hear a voice that's seeming to come from an opening maybe 30 feet farther down and still the runes are glowing and pulsing and speaking of this tale of madness and the name of Kalante continues to be seen by the wizards as they look everywhere. It's repeated, it's larger, it's small, as if it's being shouted in the stones. Schwa, you can hear this first. What would you like to do as you hear somebody making no attempt to be quiet as their shouts kind of bounce a bit up this stone area? And they're, they're shouting the name Quayante? You don't know exactly what they're shouting. It seems to be, in your ears, it seems to be a lot of gibberish, 
a lot of words that you've never heard uttered by any language outside nothing that it's not like something that you recognize to be uh french or spanish or something like that that you just don't understand these are bizarre phonetically like gasped consonants and inhaled whines as it's more primal than any type of language so it's impossible for you to make out any type of semblance and you don't recognize any names or any words that that lend itself further to your understanding Shua pauses for a moment and turns over his shoulder to address Kassar and says, Strange talking. There is strange talking down here. Do you know the words and what they mean? Nonsense. They're just gibberish. This is what it sounds to me. Likely madmen below to talk such strange words. We cannot leave a single one here. Agreed. Um, what does this area look like? Is this carved out of stone or is this more like a hallway? Um, it, it's a definitely a hallway and it doesn't appear to be carved, Ozzy. It looks as if it was fashioned in a sense, but it seems natural. It doesn't, it's not worn down. There's no areas that are chiseled beyond the markings. You know, there are the carvings and the inking on flatter pieces, and there's chiseling done to kind of create those runes and iconography, but nothing that you can detect to see that it was a, a path was created or a tunnel dug. This is something that seems to have existed and was found. So not like um, some other architecture I might be able to recognize? No, this is definitely, this is like Stonehenge, uh, but always having been there it's just rough hewn mm -hmm. and so schwa's instinct is to continue down the hallway but can i use my observation skill to see if i can see if there's any danger ahead or traps or anything that i might notice absolutely yeah go ahead and roll that for me all right so Okay, excellent. And you actually got an additional momentum, which since you guys are maxed, I'm gonna allow you to kind of spend as you go. So I'll give you a little bit more than what you would have been uh, noticed about. So as you kind of creep down a bit, Schwa, leading the others, um, there's no need for stealth per se from this distance because you can readily identify where the source of this screaming is or these, this, this madness is being uh, delivered from. And as you go further down, you don't see anything that would lend itself to be a trap or a footfall or some type of um, um, you know, device that would either alert somebody to your presence or potentially of a lethal variety to remove you from the space. But when you get down to the foot of the stairs, you begin to see the body parts. And with that observation roll, you can see that there are fresh organs eyes, limbs, digits, and they seem to be much like the world above was a blanket of these solid bodies. This world below is a puzzle that has been put together with a tapestry of flesh, bone, muscle, and organ. And this odd carpet goes forward and even though you're not aware of the meaning behind the runes that are floating in the kind of pulsing, glowing, and fading in and out around you, you're able to identify their shapes of some of them, schwa, and you can see that these, the arrangement of body parts and digits and limbs and intestine continues these runes and iconography along the floor and they too possess a light that seems to be glowing from just under the skin or the tissue. Whoever has done these things deserves to perish at the hands of mighty Schwa. He will progress forward through the field of organs, but I'm going to um, adopt a stealthy approach and try to stick to the shadows as we move forward. Okay, so for anybody that is following Schwa at this point, they need to, obviously Schwa, but everyone needs to roll a stealth roll for me, please. 
Okay, can I use Living Shadow, Gigi? Yeah. Yes. As well? Yes. Okay, I have Living Shadow. Are we hiding from humanoids? <laughs> Uh, as 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 far as you know, yes. Okay. I have a weird thing where I can like substitute insight for anything that deals with humans. Yep. Sure. Like, it, go ahead. It's weird. I don't. I, super... I will. I will allow it. It is. It is. I think that is my sixth sense. I'm going to spend a point of our momentum for an extra die. Oh no! It's see the soul. And... So, um, how you do this for uh, later on? So, when you click on the die icon, you get the input value. And in this case, when you spend momentum for next to die, you change the two to a three. Yeah, right. I feel like we need to be spending this momentum. Our pool keeps maxing out. Oops. Nope. That was a complication. Our okay. server is not quiet. So as you all are dropping in, and a couple of you got more momentum than was necessary, so the pool remains uh, filled up. But as you all get down to the bottom of the area, you see it fan out from the bottom of the stairs, going just like almost shaped like a piece of pie from this bottom of the stair area. And as it proceeds, you see the following. The carpet of corpses continues, but now everyone can identify them as wearing the same outfits that Argosian sailor outfits, just like the man with the half face, just like the carpet of bodies on the beach. Um, they are continuing down here, and there are now at the bottom of this area, this flat area after the stairs, there is a collection of puddles of blood and rivers and it seems as if this entire scene was fired in madness's furnace as you look up and you see about 40 feet from the bottom of the stairs an altar has been fashioned from a large like ovoid or oval shell um, and the bony spines of some great sea creature standing off to the side of this altar, there are four sailors who are bound with what looks like thick seaweed. Their mouths are bleeding as this kind of coral lace to the seaweed is digging into their flesh. Their eyes are wide with terror. A fifth sailor is on this altar, and there is a man that, if Zafar were to go mad and lose any of his the way he keeps himself placed and put together and well fed, um, he may resemble Zafar in the fact that he has a massive beard that is completely wild. His hair is just a shock of insanity that comes off of his head. He is wearing two shells that look very much like glasses that have eye slits cut out as they sink up over his nose and are strapped around his head with a leather, uh, a leather uh, strap or a thong and he is completely naked save for the seaweed wrap that begins at his waist and extends almost to skirt level around his ankles. He is standing there and as you all creep forward he seems completely unaware of your presence as he says the following. He also seems to be holding in his hand an oddly shaped stone from one angle, it looks like a sphere, and from another, it looks like a cube, and from another, a pyramid. And as he moves it, you are all experiencing this geometrical anomaly. He says, The way of the teeth is open, my lord. The world is yours to rent and to rule. I, Balsham, have wet the stones with blood. I, Balsham, have brought the purple waters from the skies. And it is I, Balsham, who will stand at your side as the countries of men suffer your might and tremble at your dread presence. When these last meager souls, I... Balsham invite you, my lord, to return once again to walk the realm. And he is just rocking back and forth. What would you like to do? How far away are we? About 40 feet. 
This is like a, a, a big room lit by torches. It's everything oh, is lit by the everything is lit by the runes and the iconography from the bottom of the stairway you're at the tip of a piece of pie as it spreads forward towards the crust uh he's about mid crust 40 feet away the roof is about 15 to 20 feet high so um he's sitting there at his altar of shell and spine and can is there anything between us and him just the bodies on the floor right so can i get up the seat any anything in the rafters? Can you get up in the ceiling, or is it just straight rock? Just straight rock. Again, this seems to be a space that was made by nature and not man. Uh, I think Kassar looks back to Zerga, and like pulls up his bow and like, should I do this? <laughs> sort of like, do we shoot? Shoot. Um. Zerga kind of looks at you, and then looks looks at him and kind of nods her head and then she takes her vial of acid and she's looking at the remaining sailors who are waiting. Do you want, I think I can get behind you, Jeej? Living Shadow? Oh, you can certainly try, sure. That's what I will do. I'll okay. try to fan out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have you make a stealth roll here as you are moving through the shadows cast by the runes and uh while they pulse and breathe they are casting a bit of a shadow i got a 20 as well and a... right which is no. a complication so yeah. go ahead. the yeah. following happens as <laughs> you are all standing there and pal begins to sink into the shadows um, several of you unaware of exactly where or what approach he's taking as he is one with the, the darkness as it creeps along the ground and along against the walls. Pal, as you're coming around and you're maybe about 20 feet from kind of making the corner up the crust of the pie room, um, directly in front of you and directly in your line of vision, you see two eyes open in the shadows and a mouth opens displaying brilliant white teeth that are filed into points. This is a surprise round, except Pal, because of the living shadow, is not surprised to the point where he loses initiative. Everyone else does, though, because I'm spending doom. <laughs> so um, I'm going to drop three doom here as my three guys are going to be alerted to your presence. And you see in front of you guys one coming from the sh uh the staircase above coming down towards the back end which the back end had pow in it but now has zerga and conan um and there's one that's coming from the front these very large almost the hazy figures that kind of revert to glossy black of uh, almost like ebony muscled humanoids with these brilliant almost like venom from the comic book with these brilliant uh pointed teeth smiles and these bright white eye points as they come in and we are going to have the first one attack uh i'm gonna yeah i'm spending my three momentum so he's gonna attack you first steve um he hits one time as boop, 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 let me get my guy out here no chance of dodge no Okay, you take three mental damage unless you have some type of courage soak, which I don't think that you do. Um, as you take three mental damage, the creature, as it's nose-to-nose -nose with you, loosely described, you feel its hands reach the side of your face, rip your head sideways as it breathes insanity into your ear. And you feel your mind begin to sunder as these words remove rational thought from your head so you take three mental damage is that despair is that where's mental damage yeah buddy uh for you let me see real quick man is that resolve yeah is resolve. that, is that yeah. resolve or despair yes okay. it is it is resolve so as you begin to lose resolve mm. um and it whispers into your ears the second one is going to attack uh zerga from behind it's 
does a terrible job of it and fails both times and provides you guys with a bit of momentum and I will give that to you Zerga to be able to use actually it recaps you guys the second one attacks who was the next one in line Kassar as the sorcerers are taking it on the chin here that's two attacks and each of them will do Ooh. and they're going I'm spending doom to get uh let's see so that's going to be five mental damage to Kassar oops can you not hear no I can hear you I was pointing okay to oh I'm sorry yeah five mental damage to Kassar and it's going to then stun you as these whispers creep into your head and again it just grabs your head and forces its mouth and its breath into your ear and as a boy that is already haunted this continues to shatter and threaten the integrity of your mind um do you I, have any courage soak there i have talismans okay the alchemy what does that do for me i know it does something right that should give you a measure of does, there should be a number after those whenever they were given to you um let me see if i can take a look real quick if you have them on do, do, do. it was just it was one of my alchemy things so i assumed i had to like make them or something but Right, okay, well, we I'll talk. tell you what we'll do. Normally what they do is they have a, a measure of courage that they protect you against. So we're going to say that uh, two of those soak damage will be taken away by the talismans. We'll make sure that we okay. kind of address that a little bit more next time we roll. So yeah. that'll drop it down to three, and you are stunned. So you take three despair and are, or three resolve, and you are stunned. As we drop to the regular initiative order, and we're going to go by the... Uh, order that you guys were walking downstairs in as schwa you are first one here and you see that there is somebody that has just appeared between you and uh kassar there's somebody that has appeared by um in forward by pal as he was creeping forward and apparently there's something happening in the back but right now you have an immediate problem next to you all right schwa is um mostly motivated by uh the uh, his companions getting attacked. So I'm going to attack the one that just uh, hit Kassar with the mental whisper attack of despair and doom. So I'm going to whirl around and in one quick motion jab upward with my barbed spear to try to catch this thing under the chin. And I would also like to spend a momentum so that I get an extra die roll on the attack. Okay, and I will let you guys all know that you do have your fortunes that you can use if you so desire to. Um... Ooh, let's try that. Yeah, let me try that. Yeah, because um, that'll give you an immediate attack uh, or immediate success. And you can still roll your attack to see if you can get some additional ones. Okay, so uh, so how do I how do I indicate that on that I'm using fortune on my character sheet? Uh, just go ahead, and we. I automatically consider that to be a two successes for you. So go ahead and roll your regular attack, and we will add them all together for momentum purposes. All right. Good it thing I used it. Three die that rolls a one. What's that? Yeah, uh, the, the third the third die is three yeah. die that rolls a one, which is two successes. Right. We just assume that it automatically rolled a one, which is the best thing, and gives you two successes. Okay. So, yep. And now I roll for damage? Yeah, go ahead and roll for damage because you didn't get any other additional attacks, but you attacked with the one. You can use the momentum that was generated from the use of your fortune to either add to the damage or you can use it to give yourself another attack. It is up uh, to oh. you. Yeah, I, I, let's give it another attack. A second attack okay. sounds Let's roll your first one, though, as you roll your spear for me, and let me know uh, what damage you get on these guys. Okay. Cool. So that's two, plus the, the fact that it is your piercing. We've made a note of that. So you hit inside of it, and you see it kind of disperse among the the wisps of this shadow creature as you kind of drive it in and you don't feel a whole lot of purchase inside this thing. It feels as if you're striking 
a cr- like a, a cloud or putting your maybe water as being that type of tensile. It's just not a whole lot of resistance to it. All right. Uh, but as the spear attacks, I and I feel that it's uh, like more like a, a liquid or something, I'm going to try to keep the head of the spear inside the body and just force it down into the larger torso as my second attack. Go right ahead. Yep. Okay, again, as this one comes in, it kind of just squeaks through and you're not able to um, feel the purchase that's needed as schwa is kind of fighting with this 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 blob uh, it's feeling like, but you're, you definitely have it engaged. Um, Kassar, let's go over to you as, let me get rid of the... So I'm stunned. Right. How do I clear that? Um, you can give me a doom point and you'll be all right. I can't spend like fortune or... You can spend fortune if you want to remove an effect, yes. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okie dokie. That is all right. Um, yes, that's fine. There's a big old scary monster man next to me. Uh, do I think mental damage would hurt him? <laughs> um, You, let's see. I'm going to go ahead because you had a good lore roll before and you're kind of seeing these things and as part of the dream world, sure, you think that you've got a puncher's chance with mental damage. Okay, we're not going to do that then because that sounds <laughs> that sounds suspicious. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm definitely saying that uh, you, you, it looks like you could probably do just as much damage mentally or physically to this creature. Okay. I just there's a there's a section in the book. I don't know if anyone else read this because we're we're talking about sorcery. Um, it's like you shouldn't use sorcery; it's bad. When you use it, people start looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun. Uh, gosh. So, what do I have to do to use? Because there are lots of conditions, but do you have to take them always? Because I have sorcery accoutrements. I have some other stuff. Do you want to cast a spell? Yes. You're... Okay, absolutely. You can go right ahead and do so. All right. So I roll for sorcery? You then... betcha. Yeah, okay. Bad stuff's about to happen, guys. Uh, I'm going to, can I spend a momentum here to add a yes. die? Yes. You absolutely can. Yep. Yeah, I, I would. As your your benevolent uh, GM, I would suggest spending a lot of momentum. Oh, uh, I rolled three. Okay, so three. As you're able to do this, explain what happens when you give in to your sorceress nature. This might be the first time it's happened that you fully kind of allowed uh, yourself to slip. So, as I'm being tormented by this thing, I think his own like haunted nightmares start leaking from him. And while other people might hear, start hearing the howls slightly, the, the creature that he's focusing on definitely hears the howls of wolves as other dark shadows start appearing in the dark that you can see the glowing, like almost like their own glowing eyes. In the dark, you can see more glowing eyes as growls and whispers of these wolves start tormenting the focal point of the spell. Um, and I'm casting the spell Haunt the Mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what does that do? As you cast Haunt the Mind and you all see wolves, schwa, as you are kind of working in that mist, that purple mist, and now it seems to be an actual ground fog that seems to be pouring from the mouth and the ears and the fingertips of Kassar as he is creating an environment conducive to these wolves. You feel fur brush past your leg as if something is as it runs past and you can see the glistening eyes of these lupine creatures as they are kind of moving and leaping through the, the mist. So what are you using the uh, Haunt the Mind to do, my friend? As these uh, wolves are bleeding from you. I think one of the wolves comes up and tries to like 
bite this this half man creature, uh, okay. doing the mental damage, psychic damage effect. I don't gotcha. have the PDF in front of me. <laughs> okay, well, with what you have right now, it is six damage die. So if you want to go ahead, I can roll them for you uh, for the damage, or we can. I don't have the macro, so go ahead. Okay. Okay, so that's four damage plus three effects, and the three effects with this one, I believe you're doing the psychic, compound it. So, Schwa, as the one that you're holding down and the one that would had whispered into the ear of Kassar and hurt him, you see this wolf appear beside you, the same one that brushed your leg. You can feel its fur. It's damp. It's got that rough texture to it of something that's been unkept but is used for, for thermal use you should keep it warm and it kind of looks up at you for a moment this odd drool dripping from its uh its chin as it leaps forward and with way more purchase than your spear was afforded it grips the throat of this shadow creature and tears it taking the head and the smiling pointed teeth as it shakes it and when it shakes it you feel the wetness of the fur kind of you know spray over you a bit as the creature bites and crunches into what sounds very much like bone. But as it's sitting there feasting on the shadow creature, you're able to kind of glance up and your friend who was attacked, his eyes have gone completely white and this fog is rolling out of his mouth and his hands. And Kassar, as you're sitting there doing that in your left ear, you hear, And that's going to drop off to Zafar. Can I approach the naked sorcerer so I can see him and he can see me? You absolutely can. Right. I'll do that. You can, you, you can get in his field of vision. I'll say that. Yep. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, I approach him and I stare him and do a steely glare. Okay. So you are able to lock eyes with him, and as you come forward, go ahead and roll for your steely glare. Remember, you guys have five momentum remaining. So I'm going to spend uh, one point of momentum for an extra die. Right, so, ooh, two, so it, it's three successes, no, it's five successes, because two of my successes are under my focus. Correct. So that's five total, and you can convert your regular damage and augment it with four additional damage should you so, wish to do so. Is, uh, no, this is regular. Right, okay. Uh, two, four, five damage. Plus an effect. Plus an effect, which means, well, uh, what does the, oh, the effect is stun, so he's staggered for a round. Uh, five damage means um, a trauma, and then uh, I rolled five successes, four extra damage, and it's all mental. Okay, so as you're able to, damage. as you as you lock eyes with this insane person, you notice that several of the sailors are looking, and you know they're not sure. They were hoping for rescue until they saw uh, Kaser start to have fog and smoke pour out of his eyes and now they're kind of not sure which is best to be sacrificed here or to go with the people that are producing fogs and wolves and things of that nature but uh zafar as you're able to lock eyes with him he you can feel his insanity break a bit as he drives the knife down and it cuts into the throat of the sailor in front but his hands are shaking and as he looks at you maybe the first person that he's seen that his the voices in his head have not told him to be unmindful of he shrinks back and as he shrinks back the wall behind him gives and you see him fall through that odd stone clattering onto the ground beneath the legs of the altar and out towards you among the bodies and as he falls in, you see a large tentacle peek out. It has suckers along the bottom of it. 
and as it peeks out of the wall, passing through the stone that has now become mist, um, you hear Kalante, and the sailors are desperately trying to get away from this area as the tentacle moves to pick up one of them. Um, Conan is staying with Zerga, and we are going to see what Zerga would like to do as you have one of these shadow creatures in front of you. All right, so there's one just directly right in front of her, like between her and Conan? Correct. Conan's like right beside you, like ready to help. He has not Mm -hmm. run. All right, well, uh, she will... She'll tell him, you idiot boy, do something. Um, And she will look at this thing um, and she can't quite do the cool thing she wants to do right now, I think. Um, But she is going to take out this piece of sharpened horn, which is like carved with all sorts of like scrimshaw runes. And um, she's going to attempt to stab it in the throat um, while cackling as you do when you're uh, a magic user. So I have to do a, is it a brawn roll? It is a, yeah, melee and it is a cackle attack. Yeah, agility melee. Agility melee. Uh, It's not any better than anything else. So let's see. There you go. Ah. You got two. So roll your damage for your horn attack as uh, you are able to Okay, do that. And nice, plus one, plus one. And I believe the horn that you had had piercing on it too. So yes. those would be two two additional damage as you feel with this horn that is carved a bit, um, you feel more of a grab than even though you didn't experience it. Schwa with his spear, he it didn't feel as substantial as what you're grabbing with this horn as you look at it. And as Conan turns, he's going to act I'm going to have him act with you. As the boy does pretty well uh, with one hit anyway. And he does six damage with two uh, effects as he sees you. And as you kind of, you know, stupid boy, he goes, I'm doing my best visit. And he jumps forward and takes the swords and jams them into the head of this creature. And you see that there is... You know, the smile fades a bit on the shadow creature, but it seems to have a little less of a resistance towards your combined attacks than it did against Schwa. Probably more having to do with the the, the carvings on the bone than any the horn than anything else. Um, but you guys have definitely wounded this thing, and it's dropped back a bit. As do you have anything else you'd like to do, Zarga? It is a horny attack. I'm muted. Can she, um, can she try to move out of the way of this thing and get more in the room with the sailors? Absolutely. Possible. Do a little, little dancey tumble. Kind yep. Of as, Co- as Conan took the, stepped in front, uh, narratively, you are able to break free and get into the room proper. You're going to pass by, uh, Kaser, And as soon as you do so, you begin to hear whisperings in your mind. And I would like you to make, as you are now going further in, I would like Zerga to make a, do, do, do. Let's do, now let's just do a straight sorcery roll here. Great. Okay, one, As you're sitting there, and this is all kind of taking place at once, you see the tentacles begin to come out of the wall. That odd sphere pyramid cube. Zafar, you see it kind of bounce down between the legs of the altar. It hits among the bodies for a split second, and then it shoots almost directly at you. And as you're able to kind of turn a bit, it goes over your left shoulder, and everyone that's witness to it sees Zerga reach her hand up as it smacks into her palm as she is holding this thing. Her eyes are now black fields with white star points in them as the sorcerers shoulder to shoulder are becoming less and less like the people that you knew a few hours before. 
Pal, you have one of these creatures in front of you. What would you like to do? <clears throat> yeah, Pal's like, he's been shocked that he's been seen in the living shadow. He's like, can't believe he got surprised by it. He's going to, is there any way he can strike and then get the hell away from this thing? He's going to, he's going to, he's going to try to get away from it as fast as he can after he attacks. If I had to spend momentum potentially to do that. Yeah, you can, you can do momentum to do a, uh, an additional action to break free from it. And you can even spend a third momentum to make sure it doesn't get a chance to do anything to you as you do it. Yep. Let's do that. And I will attack. Okay, you are able. Yep, you are able to hit. Uh, that's three total successes. You can use uh, the momentum gained there to do what you wanted to do, or you can use that for damage and spend two more momentum to get away. How many momentum do we have, Jeech? I mean, you we got to use them up, don't we? Yeah, five right now. Yep. Yep. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I use that for? Or can I attack again and then jump away and use momentum, using three momentum? Uh, you can, yeah, you can move away and do all that. You can stack them. They're all repeatable, so. Uh, okay, I so I can attack can... again? Yep, roll your damage for that one first, though. Yes, sir. Pretty good okay. seven. Okay, seven with two effects, and, um, we said that your effects were additional damage on that the piercing right for your yeah uh, that's fine if, yeah if you want to play it that way that's cool okay so yeah you're able to hit the one for seven you feel it bite into this thing as you kind of rip that sickle like dagger that you have up yeah, this thing yeah as you take it up you feel it give away a bit as it begins like, ah! as it's whispering and moving you see that the creature seems to be kind of side-eyeing the tentacles that are crawling out of this portal as well you can make right. your move. To, you can make your move to get away, attack, or do whatever you'd like here. I can attack again. Yeah, I've already taken yeah. that away from you, <laughs> so you can yeah. go and do it. Let's attack. Same Another situation big, yeah. as you generate yep. two more. So you can stack. You can uh, roll your damage, and I'll let you sneak away. Boom. Okay, you wreck through this thing as much like the wolf did before. It yeah, disappears. Yeah, turn it back down through. It, it, somehow this weapon of murder that has been drenched in the blood of all of Pal's uh, enemies creeps through this thing and does so much damage, you see the shadowy creature just missed out, and it just disperses into the walls. Um, it no longer is in front of you. The only thing that you have is Zafar is off to the side, and then the sailors are in the direct line of these tentacles that are whipping is around. It, is, they, what are the tentacles doing? Are they reaching for the guy, that the, the chanting man? The chanting man fell back through this now open portal and uh, because of the attack of Zafar. And as you are moving forward, it looks like it, they're kind of just lapping out right now. And the sailors along the side are shrinking away as much as their their uh, uh, shackles will allow them to, or the seaweed kind of bindings will allow them to. Um, a couple of them are more in harm's way than the others, but uh, you could definitely get to the sailors and not be in the range of these tentacles, at least, okay. you know, the ones there, in the there, back. Just a quick question. You probably won't allow me to do this. I have thievery, and that's like sense traps. Is there any way to that? There's like a trap door that I could like close this door up. Is there anything he sees? I don't know if I'm even allowed to do that because I've already made my actions. Uh, I will tell you this. It, it would be something that would require a fortune roll. But as I am being benevolent, I will let you know that uh, it's not something that you think you can close. There's no mechanical door here. It, there was solid rock and then this thing's coming through it. This yeah, is something ahead, that the, I was going to say this is something that would be in the uh, wheelhouse of the two in the back. He is definitely, he's going to blend back into, you know, he's going to, he's going to fly back into the shadows to make sure that nothing else comes at him and stay away from the tentacles. And he's going to be ready to go, I guess, strike something else uh, if need be. He's, he kind of flies back and says, this is getting fucking crazy and kind of darts back into living shadow. If I can okay. Do that. Sure thing. And we're going to have... Uh, actually, it missed both times as um, 
it got wrecked as Conan is able to try to keep the one that's in the back away from Zerga and the back of Kassar as uh, Kaser as he's kind of fighting and, and wielding this one that's on the step still. Um, we're going to go back to the initiative order. You guys are technically out of combat as Conan has uh, this thing kind of pinned. So I'm going to allow you guys to do whatever you would like if you're not a sorcerer. And then I'm going to do what I want with the sorcerer. So Zafar, Pal, and Schwa, you guys are kind of free right now. What would you like to do? The sailors are there. There's tentacles coming through the wall. And your friends seem to be in a fugue state. Was that like an actual door that opened? Or did the, a section of wall just disappear? A section of wall just disappeared. He fell back through the stone. I'm going to throw another loud firework into the pool. Okay. I'm going to not even roll some damage for me for it, Oz, because it's the whole wall, and I know that Safar can hit a wall. So you're able to <laughs> lob it in there as... Um, um, that's three damage and two effects. So okay. The area would die. Right, you see some of the you see that there's an effect on the tentacles as it seems that whatever you hit on the other side kind of rippled over the uh, the, the kind of pliable flesh, the rubbery flesh of this thing. Um, but the the they're still whipping with their suckers and octopi looking pads on their and on its tentacles as it's coming through. Um, Schwa and Pal, what would you guys like to do? Schwa is going to use his uh, acrobatics skill to um, cover the distance between himself and the prisoners. So he takes his spear and because he is so small, the spear is basically like a large pole arm to him. So he uses it to sort of pole vault forward over all of the rest of the debris of uh, guts and organs over the ground and probably over top of some melee that's happening, um, narrowly escaping a, uh, a tentacle or two, of, I hope. And then uh, he's gonna close the distance, get to the prisoners and cut their bonds. That's my. Uh, that's what I hope is gonna happen from this. That is so cool. I'm going to allow you to do everything you just said for the low, low cost of one fortune point. Hey, sounds great. You're just trying okay. to keep my fortune point. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you're able to do so. And just as you explained, um, there we go. Just as you explained, the mighty schwa places it down, flies over the chaos that's happening below. You're able to get there. And we're going to say, cool. uh, roll an acrobatics check for me just for this. If you do get two successes on acrobatics, I'll let you get all four of the sailors. If you get less than that, I'll tell you how many of them you can save. Okay, great. And uh, is this just a normal acrobatics roll, or do I add a fortune? We're gonna, the fortune was for everything else, to get you there oh. and to at least say, we're basically doing a roll here to see who you can save. Um, okay, I will allow great. you to use momentum if you want to add a die to it, though. Okay, let me, use, uh, let me add a die from our pool okay. so that I get one extra die on the, on the acrobatics roll. You guys are at three momentum then. Sure, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so you're able to succeed with one, and with one, I'm going to allow you to get two of the sailors, and Shra, just as you get there, you're able to grab two of the sailors and kind of use your spear to hook in their arms and pull them off of the altar area as the tentacles come down and grab the two that were kind of in the front, lift them up and drag them screaming and kind of muttering into this portal that now exists. You have these guys, you can quickly free them and you can retreat from this opening. As Great, you I want to retreat with moment. them back to where we are up the hall. Okay. And as you retreat back, Pal, what would you like to do? All right, this Cody is fighting one of them, isn't he? Or is that, that thing still there? How yeah, quickly Conan, looks for some... Yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, Conan, Conan's fighting the one on the stairs. Yeah, I, how quickly looks for something to steal? Is there anything in front of him valuable? Like, he's, uh, looking, for, he's looking for gold, treasure. He doesn't care about the sailors at all. No uh, concern. Well, there seems to be a... As you're looking around just in this area, there are three things. There seems to be a bag full of what would be Argosian gold. 
There is also yes. a gold bracelet, and it's a little bit farther off. And there seems to be the handle, uh, not there's no blade on it, but it seems to be a very, very finely carved sword handle. Um, I will allow you to grab one of those. Uh, using thievery, can I tell which one is the most valuable in my estimation? Nope. All right. So I got all, a bag of all, gold. They all, they all look equally, gold. equally enticing. Now tell me the sword again. It looks like a sword hilt. It looks like a bracelet, and it looks like a bag of gold. Your thievery would tell you they all look to be monetarily about the same. He'll go for the sword hilt. Okay, you're able to grab it and retreat. Okay, can I use momentum and go over and help Conan in the back? He's going to try to attack. Yeah, narratively, we're say we're going to say that you kind of move up and join to yeah. help him as we yeah. skip into the sorcerers. You guys see something very different. As everyone is running from these tentacles, you see a bright column of light coming from beyond this altar. And you see a very handsome man walking up to the edge of this portal. He has, his face is, he's shaven except for a very finely manicured mustache that drips down to his jawline. He's got black hair. He has small, dark colored lensed glasses on his nose and the hair is greased in the style of Argos and swept back, and it is very long. He's wearing a white sailor's outfit, and he appears to hold a rank, even though it's a very ancient outfit, of what would be fitting a, an admiral, or a commander privateer, or somebody that held a, a, a dominion over the forces of the water, some type of naval commander. And as he walks up to the edge of this, he looks over at the two of you. Are you going to let me out? Are you the strange tentacle beast that we just saw? <laughs> Do I look like a strange tentacled beast? You know, the eyes can't be trusted. Then trust your powers. Why would we let you out? Because I can give you more power. Kaser, from your left ear, you hear, Do not trust him. Or we could just leave you here. Why why would we want power from someone who is powerless themselves? Give me two more, and I will show you true power, boy. He seems to regard the retreating sailors that are moving away with Schwa. Right. Or we could just leave, and you'll be trapped here again. I only need two more. How long before another one of my children does what this one could not? And I will remember. <laughs> I think Asar does look to Zerga. Assuming she's there. Or are we in like different mind spaces? Yeah, are we together? You're together. But Zerga, when this guy is talking, you hear a completely different voice that seems to be coming from this odd shape in your hand. Okay. Leave him to die. Take his place. You and this one, and you can feel the attention draw over to Kassar. A case or Christ, I keep. And <laughs> the two of you have more power than this one. With me, of course. Mm. 
I don't like the look of this one. He's weak. I agree. Let's leave him. In All unison, right. in your left ear and from the stone, in two different voices, you hear, yes, yes, as they agree simultaneously. All right. I think we turn and just walk out. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see him moving up towards the edge, and he begins banging on something that no one can see. Those of you that are not of the wizard bent can see that the tentacles are lashing against the stone, but with each step that you're retreating up the stairs, um, we're going to say that Conan and Pow are able to kind of power back the shadow creature. Um, you see the tentacles being drawn into the stone wall. Um, did we hear either Kasa or Zerga talk? No. They have been completely immobile until they began to back up. And as they backed up, their think... eyes returned normal. Yeah. We should get out of here right now. Let's go, Let's, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to tell so far that. <laughs> there is no reason to fear this weak thing. We took everything that's important from it. As long as we take everything, he cannot escape. We sealed the portal. We will by leaving. Hmm. Let's go then. Con- Conan, get your ass up these stairs. We need to get out of here. He, uh, the boy, bounds up off the up the stairs. Uh, as we pass by the, the half-headed man, uh, I think Kasar would say, as as they're passing, we should take this just in case. Okay. Leave nothing. His head would look interesting on a shelf. You're taking his fucking head? No, the, the whole body. Let's go. Um, as Zerga and uh, Kaser lean down to pick up this body, Zerga, the stone that's in your hand touches his shoulder, and you see the corpse's shoulder disappear. It seems that whatever happened to his head was performed by something similar, some effect by this stone. And when you remove the stone, it's completely smooth. The shape of the stone cut from his shoulder. The arm beneath it drops off, fused and severed. You guys pull out, and as you guys pull out of this area, the doors swing, shut, and close. And as they close, the middle person reforms from the tip of their forehead between their nose, down through the sternum, they fuse back together as if the split never occurred. And as the mouths that hold the rods inside begin to close, as one, the five humans that acted as the doorway all say, Thank you. And as they drop and their heads go slack, you turn around and realize that the purple cloud above has dispersed. But Conan is standing there, his sword's out as he's looking all around in every direction. As the Kotal Terry of Argos numbering between 50 and 60 have surrounded this area on horseback and they're looking at all of you. Luckily though, you have brought two witnesses with you in the form of the sailors that Schwa saved. And as they immediately pull the seaweed, they begin spilling their guts as to what occurred both in the water and on the beach, hailing you all as heroes, saving not only Argos, but perhaps the world entire. And that, well, no, that's not where we're going to leave it today. As the two wizards are standing there listening to this correspondence, it is the haunted man, the one that has been hearing the whispers the longest, who again in his left ear hears, that one. And your attention is drawn to Conan. That one will be a problem, but perhaps we can fix it. What do you say? I was muted. I'll keep an eye on him. And I think as he does that, maybe his like cloak billows a little bit and you can see 
eyes inside the darkness of it. As the wolves begin to circle. And that is where we will end this episode of Conan Age Undreamed of. As the All thieves, right. thanks to the acrobatics of Schwa, the mysticism of the sorcerers, the barbarism of Pal, and the wondrous beard and fireworks of Zafar have been able to defeat the day and close the porter for Kalante. All right. I like it. Let's go around and talk to everybody in reverse order. Ethan, how are you doing, my friend, and where can we find you online? Hello, I'm Ethan. Uh, I'm doing great. I did some sorcery. Feel, feeling happy about that. Got, got to show off my wolf powers this time. Um, you can find me at Super Robot Bear on the Twitter, where I talk about all the things I do, including making a D and D fifth edition module called the North Seat. Uh, I'm running a campaign of Mouse Guard on Wednesdays on Anarsis's Twitch um, called Garden of the Giants, where there's mice in a human garden, and they're fun finding all these strange inhabitants that live there. Um, and Too Many RPGs, which is a podcast I co-host with my friend Lauren, where we talk to people who come in and uh, talk about their favorite RPG shows. <laughs> it, it's a fun time. Yay! Everybody, links in chat. Make sure you follow him up. Uh, Emma, how are you doing today, and where can we find you online? That was really fun. I don't know quite what's going on, um, but there, uh, Zerga has a new shiny thing and a promise of potentially unlimited power. So that's always fun. Um, it's a really fun game. It's it's amazing how easy it is to get into like that Hyborian mindset. Um, and definitely thanks to you, gamekeeper, master, whatever it's called in this game. It's, it's really fun. Um, I am the communications director for WebDM, so you can reach out to me on my personal Twitter, SusieKing85, um, where I talk about just weird shit that comes in my head, or WebDM News on WebDM Show, uh, Facebook, Twitter, what have you. Um, you talk to me there most of the time. I play on Tuesdays in Starward Bound on the WebDM Twitch channel uh, with Mr. Greg himself. Um, it's a great time having a great time those are the only games i play so that's it for me thank you so much <laughs> fantastic ozzy how are you doing and where can we find you buddy hello i really enjoyed this 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 was fun uh for, for some moment that safar would be a little bit out of his depth but uh he snuck into a corner where he could actually do some good um you can find me on twitter at Carlham, the same on Twitch, I do an occasional um, game stream, so video game stream. And uh, RPG wise, I'm currently on Capricorn Cross's channel on Tuesdays in his Chronicles of Cascadia. And that uh, is a lot of fun as well. Fantastic. And as we drop to the bottom of the screen to the man that's going to save my life at Gen Con with beer and confidence, Mark, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. I had an absolute blast playing this Conan 2D20 two-shot experience, and I'm looking forward to more in the weeks to come. Uh, my name is Mark Slack. You can find me, well, uh, several places. The first one is Twitter. Look me up at actual Slack on Twitter, where I talk about um, lots of things game related. Uh, the other place that you can find me is, if you like your RPGs in audio format, well, have I got a podcast for you. It's called Dice Tribe. You should come and check us out. And uh, that's distributed through the Encounter Roleplay Network. And uh, you can also find me at Gen Con. If you are going to Gen Con next week, boy, will I be there. I'll be uh, tweeting my ass off about it most likely. And I would love to hang out with you and talk about and or play some games. So, uh, Find me on the Twitter and let's hook up. Thanks so much uh, to you, Greg, for having me on board. And I can't wait for the next session that I get to be a part of. Awesome, brother. Awesome. And like I said, I will be uh, I will be the person in the sea of humanity that is crying. I'll probably look a lot like uh, the gentleman that you all pushed into the portal. I'll be naked from the waist up, wearing a seaweed skirt and uh, 
just crying, really. Just a lot of crying. Speaking about a lot of crying, Steve, how are you doing today, buddy? And uh, where can we find you online? Uh, I had a, had a blast. Uh, Pal's probably upset he did not get a hold of all that treasure. Uh, he would definitely want to get away from the soldiers. He wants no one to know him. And he wants to get his claws into Conan. He's already trying to uh, manipulate Conan if he can do that. Uh, but I had a blast. Uh, you can find me on your channel Sunday night where our mid-season finale for Project Athena where you, I played the White Burke and you are going to crush his hopes and dreams in this uh, particular episode, I have a feeling. So catch me there and I uh, had a blast with everybody. Thank you. Awesome, brother. And that is a good feeling. Uh, run with that feeling. The crushing of hopes and dreams uh, is my business and business is a booming. Um, I like to thank this cast so Kong. much. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank this cast so much because uh, as we're working through the system, special thanks to Ozzy, who is now a member of the Thieves. We will see all of these wonderful people again in various configurations with the first group. We will be off next week as the aforementioned Gen Con is happening, and we will be delving into the insanity of a crush of flesh that I have not experienced yet, and uh, I'll be pictures of me crying forthcoming. Um, Hang on, because in about 10 to 15 minutes, Firefly will be starting. I'll be starting up the countdown as soon as I end this stream. So, guys, take it easy. Hang around for that. Say goodbye to all these lovely people. I'll have brand new lovely people popping back up in a moment. Until then, take it easy. And uh, remember, what is best in life? It's this. <laughs>